Christian Gate enthusiasts. How does Israel play into all of this? Well, Israel's central in this, and what we're looking at is actually Israel Gate. It was Jared Kushner, the presidential son-in-law, whose family, Charles Kushner, and the family foundation run by his father, has extensive ties to Benjamin Netanyahu. In fact, when Jared Kushner was a boy and Netanyahu was in town in New York, he would have to leave his bedroom so Benjamin Netanyahu, then the Israeli opposition leader, could sleep in his bed. His family has made extensive um, it, donations to the Israeli settlement enterprise, something Kushner failed to acknowledge, um, which is part of the reason why he hasn't gotten security clearance. And here's Jared Kushner ordering Michael Flynn on behalf of Benjamin Netanyahu, on behalf of a foreign power, to lobby the Russians to use their veto power on the UN Security Council to stifle a resolution that was going to condemn Israeli settlement activity. So you're looking at actual collusion by the Netanyahu administration through their friend Jared Kushner mm -hmm. and Michael Flynn. And that is just completely inconvenient because, as we've seen with Haim Saban, one of the largest donors to Hillary Clinton, actually thanking Jared Kushner yeah. for colluding with Israel. This is a bipartisan enterprise. This is how the sausage is made in Washington. Pretty what it is. Collusion with Israel. I think that's oh the main story today. Collusion with Israel through Donald Trump, Putin, Russia, the United States of America. Colluding with Israel. That's the real story behind the fake Russia gate. So that's what we're going to get into. We're going to get into Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin's close ties with an Orthodox Jewish group called Chabad. We're going to talk about... Um, what he just talked about, which was Kushner pushing for, on behalf of the Israeli government, lobbying the Russians through uh, General Flynn, who was the subject of Russiagate. Nothing ended up coming to pass because of that. So in this episode, we're going to in investigate relatively in depth some of these ties to Israel that people haven't been looking at. Some of the things that QAnon has been looking at, and we're celebrating our first video in a while without a hashtag QAnon in the title. I'm your host, Nathan Stoltman. Doshi is sleeping on the job and not in the right place. Today, that's my producer. He's off. I run one ad every show. That's for shirts like this one. I have my Russian bot shirt on today. Those are available at truthclothing.io, which is a company my wife and I run together. Sorry about that. This is our website, truthclothing.io. Take a look at the Russian bot tee, mostly real. Truth Matters is popular, and we do have a limited edition t-shirt on there. You should check out as well. As well you can just get one Doshi sticker and actually support the show if you want to, and some people do that from time to time. We also have merchandise such as coffee mugs. Thank you for joining me for this experience on YouTube, on Twitch, on BitChute, on DTube, or on podcast. You can find me everywhere. Live, live, I will say right now on Twitch at twitch.tv slash lift the veil 401. That's where we're live right now recording this. And uh, we have been for a bit. We are every day, even when we're not on YouTube. So check us out over there. Now I'm going to get into this story. Um, the real story way back, this is from early December that this story was uh, breaking, was the collusion between Israel and the Trump campaign through Jared Kushner, friends with Netanyahu. Netanyahu slept in his bed and there are closer ties with Russia, with Russian oligarchs, Putin, Donald Trump. So the fake Russiagate narrative says that there was collusion with Russia. There's Doshi. He knew the show was going on and the Russian state to swing the election in favor of Donald Trump away from Hillary Clinton. Now there's evidence that rather than Russian bots, we actually had Israeli bots involved in manipulating social media, spreading fake news. Believe it or not, this is all coming out, but it wasn't Russian bots. It was actually Israeli bots, which means we might have to print new t-shirts. Anyway, Greenwald wrote about it. 
Trump's transition team colluded with Israel. Why isn't that news? Thanks to Mueller's ongoing investigation, we now know that prior to Donald Trump's inauguration, members of his inner circle went to bat on behalf of Israel and specifically on behalf of illegal Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories, behind the scenes, and in opposition to official U.S. foreign policy. That's the kind of collusion with a foreign state that has gotten a lot of attention with respect to the Kremlin, but colluding with Israel seems to be of far less interest. Strangely, this was a story of collusion that never got picked up. For some reason, rather than indict Donald Trump on collusion with a foreign power, that being Israel, they continued the phony Russiagate investigation. Then more recently here, about a week ago, we started talking about a meeting between Trump Jr. and two foreign entities. That would be an aide uh, a representative of the UAE and an Israeli running a PSYOP company called Psy Group, which claims to manipulate reality. This is what happened. Eric Prince, the private security contractor and the former head of Blackwater, arranged the meeting, which took place on August 3rd, 2016. The emissary George Nader told Donald Trump Jr. that the princes who led Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates were eager to help his father win election as president. The social media specialist Joel Zamel extolled his company's ability to give an edge to a political campaign. By that time, the firm had already drawn up a multi-million dollar proposal for a social media manipulation effort to help elect Donald Trump. Now, as evidence that that may have gone through, even though Trump Jr. denies that he enlisted their help, after Mr. Trump was elected, Mr. Nader, who was the representative of the UAE and Saudi Arabia, paid Mr. Zamel a large sum of money described by one associate as up to $2 million. There are conflicting accounts of the reason for the payment, but among other things, a company linked to Mr. Zamel provided Mr. Nader with an elaborate presentation about the significance of social media campaigning to Mr. Trump's victory. And they worked with Cambridge Analytica and Cambridge Analytica in their secretly recorded meetings uh, said that they helped Donald Trump win the election through social media manipulation, branding, etc. In fact, they go into more detail. There were slides of a presentation prepared by this Israeli PSYOP group called literally Psy Group. The documents obtained by the journal include details about creating fake social media accounts and fake news sites. In one of the slides entitled Trump Campaign Components, there is a 2016 timeline and references to establishing fake news sites, avatars, content in the first few months of the year. Through May and July on the timeline, the documents suggest that this would be, quote, discrediting news, spreading uncertainty, and fake content, unquote, by the summer. The final part leading up to Election Day entailed, quote, using fake bots to react to real-life situations and full, further polarize the TA, the target audience. Another slide called Fake News Sites Facebook Strategy purports that there were, quote, over 140 pro-Trump websites owned by the same man in Veles, Macedonia, unquote. The slide also says that Facebook avatars would be spreading this news. In an additional slide, Facebook strategy, there are three steps outlined. The first is avatar seeding in relevant groups. The second is real people sharing, engaging. And the final one is a multiplier effect with mass people spreading lies. There is a secret underneath, there is a screenshot underneath of a Facebook account writing hashtag crooked Hillary would totally destroy Middle East further. This is going to be the hardest thing for people who are into Trump and spreading the Trump message and spreading things about Pizzagate and spreading things about Hillary's health, all of the, all things which have truth in them, but all things which I believe were part of these manipulated campaigns to use bots. Israeli bots, avatars, running actually fake 
groups in support of Donald Trump. It's okay. Like I supported Donald Trump still, and I probably retweeted a lot of those stories. But we have to accept that there may have been foreign intervention in the U.S. election on behalf of Donald Trump, on behalf of such countries as the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and most notably, Israel. So now let's talk about, um, this is from Haaretz. They point out the countless Israeli connections to the Mueller probe of Trump in Russia. The Israeli, Israel lobbyists, Netanyahu cronies, psyops manipulators, and well-connected oligarchs. Could it all be just one big coincidence? Points out that many of the donors, many of the people caught up in the Mueller probe of Trump and Russia are Jewish oligarchs. This is another article from Haaretz, Know Your Oligarch. A Guide to the Jewish Billionaires and the Trump-Russia Probe. I'm going to go ahead and play you a video right now before we get into a group. Um, actually, this is the connection here between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin and swinging the election. It has to do with this Jewish group called Chabad. This is from Politico, the happy-go-lucky Jewish group that connects Trump and Putin. They say, um, starting in 1999, Putin enlisted two of his closest confidants, the oligarchs Lev Leviev and Robin Abramovich, who would go on to become Chabad's biggest patrons worldwide to create the Federation of Jewish Communities of Russia under the leadership of Chabad rabbi Beryl Lazar, who had come to be known as Putin's rabbi. A few years later, Trump would seek out Russian projects and capital by joining forces with a partnership called Bayrock Sapir, led by Soviet emigres Tevfik Arif, Felix Sater, and Tamir Sapir, who maintain close ties to Chabad. The company's ventures would lead to multiple lawsuits alleging fraud and a criminal investigation of a condo project in Manhattan, apparently also associated with organized crime. Now, this group Chabad is a an Orthodox Jewish group, which is a strong supporter of settlements, and they're related to Jared Kushner. This is an article from Forward. Kushner Foundation gives $342,000 to Chabad. Asking if you're still surprised about Jared and Ivanka Synagogue. Jared and Ivanka also go to a Chabad Synagogue in Washington, D.C., Here's an article about Trump endorsing the Chabad movement in an event attended by Jewish leaders. I'm going to play you a video, and I'll leave a link for this in the description, uh, about a five-minute video from Dutch Anarchy. Like I said, I'll leave a link. This is from February, talking about what we've just been talking about and Putin's connections to Israel. I've gone over Trump's connections to Israel already and maybe we'll summarize that a little bit here at the end but let me play this for you it's not just trump that is connected to chabad lubavitch chabad rabbi Beryl lazar is the chief rabbi of russia he is very close to president vladimir putin the jewish oligarchs at putin's side are also the main financiers of chabad lubavitch Jews control the wealth of Russia, and Chabad is a dominant force. They're not going anywhere. If this offends you, know that there are Russians who agree with me. Chabad can say whatever they want about Gentiles. Meanwhile, Putin is making it illegal to criticize them. A taxi driver in Russia was sentenced to 350 hours of community service for writing online that Jews dominate Russia and the world. Imagine what would happen if we were in Russia. Putin passed a law sentencing Holocaust deniers to five years in prison. Russia is virtually free of anti-Semitism. Putin is calling for Jews to emigrate to Russia. Jews destroy your country. I will have to say, 
this person has a particular point of view, which we don't, we aren't necessarily endorsing. He said, Jews destroy your country. So we aren't necessarily endorsing that point of view. Just a disclaimer. Why would Putin be welcoming them into Russia? That's because they're not a threat. They've already destroyed Russia with Marxism and took it over 100 years ago. It's the West which they are currently destroying with cultural Marxism so that they can take it over. As Putin's rabbi Beryl Lazar puts it, the West lacks mutual respect, unlike Russia. Putin was Israel's person of the year in 2015, despite working with Syria and Iran. Reuven Rivlin, the president of Israel, says that Putin is loyal to Israel's security. If you read the comments on RT's videos, you might actually believe that Putin is against Israel. But Putin's rabbi, Beryl Lazar, says that ties with Israel have never been closer. Israel has a simple message. We don't put all our eggs in one basket. We don't rely only on America. Putin is arming the Arab and Muslim states and working with Israel exactly as the Soviet Union was doing. He's profiteering from the war in Syria. He's not there because he wants to defend Christianity. That's literally KGB propaganda. Putin supported Israel during their 2014 bombing campaign of Gaza. Chief Sephardic Rabbi of Israel, Yitzhak Yosef, said to Putin, According to the Jewish tradition, your leadership is decided by the Kingdom of God, King of the world, and therefore we bless you. Blessed is the one who gave of his glory to flesh and blood. The Sanhedrin contacted Breaking Israel News to announce that the election of Trump, who has promised to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, coupled with Putin's expressed desire for the temple to be rebuilt, prompted the Jewish court to send a letter offering the two the opportunity to act as modern-day Cyrus figures, non-Jewish kings who recognize the importance of Israel and the temple. An Israeli bystander called out in Russian, Welcome, President Putin. Putin approached the man who explained the importance of the Temple Mount and the Jewish Temple. Shadre Sharadin, an Orthodox Hebrew news site, reported that Putin responded, That's exactly the reason I came here, to pray for the Temple to be built again. Putin's on our side, says Beryl Lazar. Chabad Lubavitch, who is pushing to rebuild the Temple in Jerusalem, wields tremendous influence in both Russia and Israel. When Ben-Gurion announced plans to rule the world from Jerusalem, calling for a world alliance and no more wars, that always included Russia. Some people will say, oh, but the Jewish media is against Russia. That media isn't pushing Israelis to go to war with Russia. It's pushing Americans to fight a war that they are not going to win. As you've heard earlier, the rabbis want a large war. When the dust settles, Putin will be fine. Whereas the United States will be bled dry just like Germany after World War I and the Treaty of Versailles. Israel will take its place as the new superpower. There's so much more to this. We'll get into it in part two in the future. The third building of the third temple in Jerusalem. So the way Israel has taken over our foreign policy in many ways, is the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem. Also our part in trying to disrupt UN votes, condemning Israel for anything, the settlements, etc. We come out in support of Israel the same day that they are killing protesters at the border with snipers, where Jared Kushner is speaking at the um, establishment of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem against what Every other country in the world thinks we should have done, rubbing in the face of the Palestinians, making a two-state solution more unlikely, in this journalist's opinion. Zion is Jerusalem, Zionism, reestablishment of Jerusalem as the capital of the Jews, and then rebuilding the third temple in order to hasten the return of the Messiah. You don't believe me? That's... Chabad is kind of an end times organization. So they want to do things 
to hasten the return of the Messiah and the birth of the Golden Age. Here's an article from Habba.org about hastening the coming of the Messiah. And take a look at this unbelievable clip of Netanyahu speaking with representatives of Habad. This is an Israel first policy. Can you believe that? Let's do something to hasten the return of the Messiah. You might wonder what the point of this episode is. It's an Israel first policy. I just want to tell you, I looked up the definition of anti-Semitism just to see what would be crossing that line. This is, this is the official version of the U.S. State Department. And I, I'm not sure. One of the, these are contemporary examples of it. accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nations. Can't say that. Making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such or the power of Jews as a collective, especially but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. The State Department says that's anti-Semitic, actually. I We didn't actually do that in this episode, fortunately. I'm just letting you know um, how it's actually defined and how they're actually trying to get universities to officially recognize anti-Semitism to properly stomp it out. We're researching the Israel first policy of the United States and most likely Russia. It's the reason you don't see Russians shooting down Israeli rockets. and You don't see them retaliating against Israeli attacks, nor really talking about it much. So even though they might seem anti-Israel in the end, it's, it seems like most likely Putin and others are under the influence of a secretive group, this little organization, Chabad, and this Jewish federation that um, Vladimir Putin set up to controlling world politics in a way. I mean, you could see their fingerprints on U.S. foreign policy and uh, most likely Russian policy as well. So that's what we're examining on shows like this. I appreciate you tuning in. Doshi made it, as you may have seen there at the beginning. Once again, you can find me live on Twitch, oops, twitch.tv slash lift the veil 411 or download the app, Twitch app and find me and set your notifications and then you'll know when I go live. Thanks for engaging your brains and from me and Doshi, that is what it is.